Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I'm the host and a visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning and welcome back to the Valder Beebe Show. My next guest is Dr. Amy Shapiro and she brought a guest, Guy. We're going to talk about a subject I don't think people talk about enough, hemophilia. Dr. Shapiro and Guy, welcome to the Valder Beebe Show for the first time. Welcome and thank you for having us. Dr. Thanks. Shapiro, okay. Can you start us off with what hemophilia is? Yes, hemophilia A is a rare genetic disorder where people's blood does not clot normally. People with hemophilia bleed longer and often into their joints and muscles. And if the bleeds are not controlled, it can lead to long-term joint disease and chronic pain. Bleeding episodes can be life-threatening if they occur in vital organs. About 20,000 people in the United States are affected, and because this is a rare disorder, we still hear many misconceptions about individuals who are affected with hemophilia and the disorder itself. And when I said that we don't hear enough about this, uh, we used to hear, well, at one time we heard a lot about it because I think Ryan White, he died of AIDS, but he was a hemophiliac who got a transmission, a blood transfusion. And we heard a lot about it, but then it's pretty much died down. But it's still obviously alive and well in our culture, correct? Yes, hemophilia still occurs at a consistent rate. Uh, so individuals are still being born or identified with hemophilia. And you bring up a very good point about the transmission of bloodborne viruses. These days, uh, many of the treatments are genetically engineered. So they're much safer. Uh, that's good to know. If you don't mind, I'm going to switch to Guy. Guy, I think you can tell us from the perspective, a different perspective about living with hemophilia. Would you give us a synopsis version of that? Of course. I was diagnosed at birth, so I haven't known anything other than having hemophilia. At the ages of one and a half and three, I had two strokes, which were considered spontaneous head bleeds due to hemophilia. So I gained, I, I became legally blind and gained some seizures from it. So since then, I, I was always afraid of nicking myself while shaving or doing dishes and cooking and things like that. And I'd bleed for days if I were to do normal things, but I'd be, I'd do treatments five days a week when I was younger, go to the hospital every day almost. And then home treatments became available and I would, I would do treatments at home, but I wouldn't be able to see my veins. So they put a, a Metaport, which are used for cancer patients, patients in my, under my skin. And for, in my experience, it, it wasn't that, that good. And I was the first. I was the first one in line to raise my hand for a new treatment when it became available. Are you better now? Is it better? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, a lot more managed. I a lot more managed. I, yeah. Yeah. I just got married. Started my own small business. I graduated college twice. I got my bachelor's and master's ever since starting treatment about two years ago, three years ago. So congratulations on all those thanks. normal and things, guy. Yeah. yeah, that is a wonderful opportunity to tell people that life goes on. Thank you so much. I'm going to switch to Dr. Shapiro. Dr. Shapiro, I love a story that has a great, great crescendo and guy's story has a great crescendo. So is it the medication that gave him a regular life? Like people sometimes take for granted. Well, for people like Guy who are living with hemophilia A, until a few years ago, the FDA-approved preventative medications were all administered into a vein, uh, which is called intravenously, up to a few times a week, and that could be difficult for many individuals. Now, people with hemophilia A have an option called Hemlibra, which is a prescription medication to reduce or prevent the frequency of bleeding. And this is the first medication for hemophilia A that is administered as a shot underneath the skin or subcutaneously. And it can be administered at home after either people with hemophilia or their caregivers have been trained by their physicians. 
Uh, heme Libre, like all medications, can have side effects, some of which can be serious, including excessive blood clotting or throm what's called thrombosis. And this is usually only in individuals who are using Heme Libre in addition to another medication. So it's very important that people who are considering this do speak to their physicians. I'd like to wrap up with this final question. I would like to know with COVID-19 and people with hemophiliac, has there been more uh, caution for them or is it what's going on there? Well, uh, just like anyone else with a chronic disorder, we have tried our best to keep our patients out of the emergency room and public places uh, and to keep them at home, keep a good supply of products available and to contact us when they need us. There is more information about this medication, uh, Heme Libra, that's online at a website called hemelibra.com. And I do want to thank Genentech for partnering with Guy and myself to bring more information about this disorder into the community. Thank you for sharing that. And I said that was my last question, but I have to ask this question. With yes. so many people being furloughed or, or losing their job, is there any help to get this medication? Uh, there is help. You do need to contact your treating physician or hemophilia treatment center. You can also go through national agencies uh, that are patient-based organizations for people with bleeding disorders. And you can also contact the company itself, uh, which may have uh, steer you to other sources or agencies that can assist people. But that's a very good question in that being furloughed has affected a lot of individuals within the United States as a whole. And of course, then because uh, our patients are embedded within the community, our patients as well. Well, I'm going to hold on what the president-elect said. Help is on the way. We're going to hope help is really on the way. Dr. Amy Shapiro, I know you're a hematologist, oncologist, and a co-founder of Indiana Hematology and Thrombosis Center. I want to thank you for taking the time to talk to my public and making them aware. And I want to wish you the best in life, Guy, because you're doing really good. Thanks for being here on the Valder BB Show. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I host the Valder Beebe Show, broadcast on radio and television. And this is My Phone Pouch. My Phone Pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com.